Before we get started on this episode, a couple of quick housekeeping items. This was an adult league match that was really interesting. Chris Sanderdelli joined me for the breakdown. We had a lot of great discussion, a lot of really good field audio, but by the time I was done editing the episode, it was over 50 minutes long for the entire game. So we're going to split it into two episodes, cover the first half in the first episode, part one, second half in the second episode, which we'll call part two. So make sure you watch both because they do add together. Also, we've started going to a different cadence of our game releases. I'm trying to release a game about once every three weeks while breaking down into shorts and interesting kind of controversial calls or interesting moments in the games for shorts. So find us in the YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, TikToks, that kind of stuff. Look for those. Hope you enjoy this one. Let's get the first half going. Welcome back to another episode of Reffing with the Sappers. Today we've got Chris Sanderdelli's back to yep. <laughs> your glutton for punishment. You're back to <laughs> go through another game, but I really appreciate it every time you're on. The for insights sure. are great. We are going to do something we haven't done in the past episodes. This is going to be the first one where there's an adult recreational league that I referee sometimes, mm -hmm. and I've got what I think is a great game. All right. Gonna be blue versus white was a really interesting game. Lots of good field audio, two red cards, five yellow cards. And it was one of those games that just had a lot of game management in it. Good, good. <laughs> and that's what you'll find with adults is it's more about management. They know how to play the game. It's not about restarts. It's about managing the players. So in contrast to how this game ends, <laughs> it started pretty chill and we're really, it was it 14 minutes in before we have our first real decision of the match. So this one's over on the right hand side and we're going to see that as this ball is coming around right there, this blue player just clips him with his, the toe of his cleats right on his ankle. You see he goes down. Now actually in the game, I couldn't even see it. So. It, the way they act, they look. it looks like a foul, mm -hmm. but you see my assistant referee puts up his flag, helps me out there, and it's really straightforward to call. You betcha. Uh, in, in matches like this, if, if it looks like a foul, it probably is a foul. Mm. If a player's going down like that with what looks like really limited contact, go ahead and blow the whistle. Yeah. So minute 17, we've got one that was controversial on the field. White's on an attack here, got a breakaway. Uh, Blue's coming in trying to defend. And as I play this here, you'll see right there, White goes down. But really on the field, I just felt like he was stumbling anyway. I don't see a foul either. There may have been a bit of contact on the toe portion of the, the blue defender onto the backside of the heel of the white attacker. However, the, the left leg of the white attacker seems to come out to indicate that he's trying to throw his body in the way to buy himself some more time to get a better touch on the ball. And that threw him off balance. And then once he was off balance, it was over. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna call this a correct decision, but tell us in the comments if you think it's wrong. On to minute 21, we've got another one that ended up, uh, this was a call for a handball on the field. Now, this player ended up later in the game. He wasn't happy with this call. Later in this game, every single time it touched an opponent's hand and he let me hear about it. But let's let's watch here and White's gonna kick it up and it's gonna hit this defender's hand right there. Right there's the moment it touches his hand. And where I'm standing, like, I don't actually see that contact. No. I'm, I'm looking through his body. So mm -hmm. I, I can't really see how far out his hand is. But when I look, I see that, right? Yeah. So, like, I don't know, maybe it was a natural position. Definitely for me when I view this, the, the elbow coming straight up, elbow leading the rest of the arm away, upward was, told me that that arm was in an unnatural position. I didn't have the angle on it and just the way everything played out, I had to go with my my instinct on it. Absolutely. And if you do want to sell this as a no call with, with the adult players is just let them know, Hey, I couldn't see that. I was mm -hmm. looking directly through his body and they'll go, well, okay. Makes sense. A couple minutes later, another very interesting one that will also have some pretty good audio field audio on this one. So we've got the balls bouncing in the air. It's really up for grabs. And this white player here and the blue player there are going to be challenging for it. And let's watch the contact right there. I'm going to play this back and pause it right here. So what I saw in the field, the white player, he's jumped higher. He's put himself in 
more elevated position and his cleat is up. So you notice that the blue player, like his cleats down here oh, right yeah. near the ground, right? White players cleats way up. And I saw that cleat very nearly get this blue player in the stomach. Okay. And you know, I was, I was having pictures of like, you know, full on scrapes across. So when this happens, I run in immediately, pull the yellow card out of my pocket and while he's even still on the ground. I'm, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm giving Absolutely. him the yellow. I'm curious what you see there, Chris, if you agree on the... It's a bouncing ball. We expect the players to play a bouncing ball in some manner, some fashion. A, a bouncing ball that's headed towards what looks like a chest area, mm. I'm never going to play with my feet. Mm. And if I do, I should expect that I'm going to get some sort of infraction for that. Mm. I, I'm, I'm foul white all day. So foul there, and I felt it was reckless, so I wanted to go with the yellow. As we say the, the first one's free. First one's <laughs> right? free. The, there's nothing wrong with it. And, and the first one's free. We, we smile when we say that. But at the end of the day, our whistle and our cards are behavior modification tools in which we are going to use to modify the, the behavior of the players. And if the whistle doesn't work, the cards need to work because you've got two options on cards. And after you remove one, they've got one more option and then they can go home because they can't modify their behavior to suit the match. What I'm saying is when an opportunity presents itself and you need to modify the behavior, modify the behavior. Don't mm -hmm. be afraid of giving the yellow card or the red card if it's deserved, because if you do, withhold that card withhold giving those cards you're you're not doing yourself any favors because the temperature of the match is probably going to increase and then secondly the next refer next set of referees mm -hmm. are going to deal with that issue as it continues to escalate let's listen to the field audio here because i think there's some some gold here <laughs> so i come in i give him this card what? my my fault this guy pushed me it's my fault you are kidding. You are kidding. It's not a fault. You are kidding. You jumped in with your oh, cleats jumped, up. The guy pushed me. <laughs> How is it possible? Back. Don't earn the second one right away. You jumped in with your cleats That's up. Wrong. That's wrong. I, I think a, a sage piece here was don't earn the second one for arguing. That's the key. This is an emotional game. A brief emotional reaction is expected. A prolonged demonstrative dance and show is not and we'll go ahead and give him the second one if he needs it however let them let them blow that steam off yep. one minute later following the yellow card and by the way in this league whenever you get a yellow card the player has to leave the game for a five minute cooling down period so they can't re-enter until five minutes later so but now we've got uh, another foul here that i called and right here, we're going to see this player slip down. And at first, it looks like he just slips on the ball, right? It looks like probably nothing happened here. But if I back it up and <clears throat> we look here, he's trying to control this ball. He touches it forward with his left foot. And then right here, this white player coming in to challenge behind him really gets him on yep. the back of the ankle. And so you see him kind of jump forward as a, oh, ow, that hurt, right? And that's when he actually falls down. So it was that clip on the Achilles that I that I got. And I realize in, in full speed, real time, it doesn't look like it was there, but I, I saw it. Call that foul. He's not very happy about this. He doesn't think it should, should have been called, right? So he's yeah. arguing. And then he gets frustrated and he kicks the ball away. Huh? Oops. <laughs> so, Oopsies. Yeah, that's unsporting. So I end up going ahead and uh, giving him a yellow card for unsporting behavior. And yeah, blow this here. Go ahead and give him that one. Now this white team's gotten two yellow cards. Two in, yellow cards in, in a minute and a half. A minute and a half, yeah. basically. Yeah. So there ends up being quite a bit of noise from the sideline here. So let's actually let's listen to the discussion because this actually becomes important later. Now you'll hear me refer to somebody as the coach in this league. Kind of the coach and the captain are the same mm -hmm. kind of thing. So uh, you'll hear me refer to coach, but let's. Uh, but it is that player who was just yellow carded a minute before. So let's let's listen here. Three, you got to go out for five minutes. You got it. I got it. Coach, don't earn the second one right away. He kicked the ball away. Coach, you're already on one, and I'm going to hold you responsible for your sideline. Now, following that exchange, they did calm down for quite a, quite a period of time. File this away in your memory, because this becomes important much later in the game in the second half. So, 
Okay, it's about seven minutes later, uh, into minute 31, when we've got our next decision, and it's one that I might have missed here. So the ball's on the far side of the field, White's bringing it up, and then right here, the ball is kicked up, it's flying up, and then right there, it looks like it probably touches this player's hand. I think you can see the ball's trajectory change a little bit. If we look at the moment this happens, where I'm standing, I'm looking through this player and then really through this player's the back head, of the head yep. back of the head. So I really didn't have a good view of it, right? Yeah. I couldn't tell for sure. Huh. So we've been kind of talking here that it's reasonable to let play, but I do feel like I missed something there. Yeah, the, the video caught you here. And as far as game control, did you lose any game control or, or any credibility from that? I don't think so. So I think while, while Chris is trying to give me some, some referee benefit here, I think Let's go ahead and take, we'll take a half point deduction on this one. I, uh... Minute 34, we've got a pretty straightforward one in my book, um, but it's one that in youth games might sometimes be controversial. So we see this white player go down hard, but really he's trying to get that ball and keep blue from having that straight run in. So yep. he's throwing his body in, whipping his body around in order to get that kick. And so he does fall there, but you'll notice uh, nobody complains at all. You know, at this level, they know that that's yeah absolutely this is this is one of those calls that in the youth game the, the parent the spectators are a bit upset because tammy fell down tammy threw herself off balance and a stiff breeze would have knocked her over <laughs> and the same thing happened here okay we're about a minute later and blue is trying to flip the field here so the the, the camera is kind of panning as it goes here but this ball is up for and then right here there ends up being this uh and we kind of pause it right at the moment. So they come in and right there, White just kind of gets to that ball a second or mm -hmm. split second before oh, yeah. Blue gets him on the foot. And for me, that's a pretty straightforward call. Now let's listen to the audio a little bit here. Hey, hey, <coughs> hey, you show yellow. Uh, you show yellow. And I can see that White would want that because their player saw yellow for coming in with studs up into a bouncing ball challenge. However, as you see right here at this frame, the, the blue player, as they're coming in, their, the, the outside of their foot, their toes are pointed down. Mm. He's coming in with kind of like a paddle as opposed to coming in to stomp. And, and so that immediately says, says to me that he is conscious of that player and he's not being reckless. Yes, foul, card, never. On to minute 37, we've got a no call here in this. I've said it many times on the channel. I'm going to keep saying it, that one of the hardest things for me as a referee is these uh, situations where an attacker's running in, the keeper's running out, and especially when they flip the field, because I think in this case, I was they were it started on the other end of the field, and they're running. And So let's watch it here as they come together. Right there, yeah, the you know the blue player he gets a touch on it right here, and then it goes to the keeper, and the keeper saves it. Now a little bit in doubt is right here. This keeper's leg kind of comes up a little bit there, right? Now it's really hard to see mm -hmm. that in real time. And this blue player falls down, but you can tell he gets up. He's not expecting any any foul. And I made that a no call on the field. I felt like it was a fair save by the by the keeper. Absolutely. Uh, totally fair save. Blue got the touch. The next touch was off of the white goalkeeper. In playing the ball legally, their follow through happened to come into the legs of the blue player who hadn't played the ball last. But it's something to watch. Like oh, if, for if, sure. if that leg's coming up, is he like trying to initiate contact or 100%. is it kind of more of his natural motion? Yeah. In this case, I think it's more of his natural motion. Absolutely. But it's definitely one of those. But you get microseconds to decide. Microseconds to, to decide. The, the cool thing here is 23 took the impact, got up and went, well, dang it. We're right back to playing. Yep. So we're coming up on the end of the half. I think we've got a couple of decisions left here and we've got a potential handball. I left it as a no call. Let's watch here. Blue kicks it up and it drops right back down. And then you see them, even the guy whose hand is hit, he's holding his head like, hey, hey, hey. But let's back it up and let's look at what I actually would have seen. So right here is the moment that that happens. And just like this camera angle, 
is looking through the back of that white player and you just cannot see what actually happened. I'm a little bit, you know, I'm, I'm some degrees to the left, yeah. but I'm still not in much better position, no, right? No, not at all. But it also, it was super close. No, the close distance? <laughs> Look, we're, we're the blue player standing two hash marks from the white <laughs> player where approximately the impact. But some of it's just angles. Uh, I don't, I don't see enough here to overturn no, what I said on the field. Not at all. So. No, I that if you didn't see it, you can't call it. So same minute, we've got another handball decision, <laughs> and we've got some good audio on this one. But here, the ball's coming up. Blue's going to try to clear it, and then right here, he kicks it up, and again because of the angle of the camera, and this is why angles are important. Like we can't actually see what happened, but I would have been looking from the center circle over. I would have had a very credible position on this one. And you see, he's got his arm wrapped in like this, mm -hmm. right? And so it's in the silhouette of his body. It hits, yes, it hits his arm, but his arm is like glued to his body, right? And then the ball just drops right down. So bring this down a little bit to where we can we can see it without us being over it. We see this blue player here. This is actually the guy who early in the, the game, first one. the very first handball. So now we've had kind of two in rapid succession that he thinks should be a handball. So let's listen to the audio on this. Come on! So he's, he's over there like, hey, I didn't complain when you called it on me, but you got to call it on it. Like, dude, like, yep. <laughs> well, let's let's run back a little bit. Scott would have been seeing the right shoulder of number 10 mm -hmm. and would have seen some of what was happening on that right shoulder. At, oh, what What is awesome is actually the shadow. The shadow. Oh, yeah. The shadow right. tells you exactly right. what it hit. It hit him in the shoulder. So that ended up being our last call of the half, but uh, we're going to say that one was definitely the right call. Oh, yes. I think the other one could go either way. This one, yep. every day of the week and twice on Sunday. There is you go. Be. So as we go into halftime, there is some discussion that happens on the field that I think is awesome to listen to here for oh, a yeah. game review. But I want to point out, you see this player running here from the, the backs and from the white team's bench. He's actually the team captain who got the very first yellow card. Mm -hmm. And then we've also got this blue player down here. He's the one who got that first handball yep. and then has been chirping. So let's listen to the discussion as it happens here. It's really deflating as all, dude. Like, I, like I've been the best behave you've ever seen me. Like, seriously, so like, what? I know it's, it's, so it's funny, but it's not. But I like, but like that one, like, I think I was like maybe here when it hit me in the hand. And then in, in, this your, guy, in your arm, you're, you're showing me your arm like yeah. like so. It's below my waist. It's a natural position. In my okay. case, it's a uh, worst behavior. Your, your guy, your guy putting your foot. I'm not even talking guys, about I'm not guys, talking guys, about you. Guys, I'm guys talking listen, about listen, a listen, listen, listen. Yeah, I'm going to leave the plane to you guys. Just yeah. leave the refing to me. Yeah, you okay. don't even have to worry about it. Okay, but. I so I'm going to pause it there. I will say, you know, that's something that I say sometimes. It'll actually, we'll see it even more in the second half. It happens again. Now let's listen to the, the next part of this. I, I, I'm i sorry to discuss with you, but um, in that case there, I, my foot is higher, but the guy put his foot higher than me, no, his and foot, he pushed me. His foot was not he higher than you. Me. You both came in, neither of you had the ball, and your cleats were up. Okay. So you got it because your cleats were up. Okay. But neither one of you had possession, neither one of you gained possession, and you both went in. Okay. So you got it for being dangerous. Okay. Okay. Uh, the one key thing here, a, a takeaway that, that, that'll that help you going forward is everybody is entitled to their view on what happened. Don't tell the player no. The, using the word no with the player who's an adult who thinks he's, he's, you know, God's gift to soccer, we are setting ourselves up for potentially an emotional outburst at the mm -hmm. result of using the word no. I understand that's how you saw it. Thank you. I've made my decision. That says no without me saying no. Without saying no. So it's also interesting. Let's listen to as we walk off the field and we're talking as a referee crew. So no, they were obviously not very happy in that half. But uh, did you guys see anything I missed? They, they are never happy, <laughs> and they will never be. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty typical. I'll ask, um, you know, in this case, they he basically, you know, went with what I had, but I always ask coming off the field, what'd you see, what I miss? Always. That's that's a super critical time at halftime to chat with your crew, see what's going on, see if you missed anything. 
And, and for me, in, in my matches, I asked my crew, is there anything that I'm calling that you would like me to let go? That, mm. Or is there anything that I'm not calling that you'd like to see me tighten? Thanks for watching that one. Be sure you watch next week for the second part of this episode. It gets really interesting with a couple of red cards in the second half. So enjoy it.